In this logic tutorial, you will learn how to convert audio, specifically guitar, to MIDI in order to perform a variety of functions using Logic Pro X's new MIDI effects plugins. This is a great way to rethink what your guitar can sound like and will open you up to a whole new palette of creative possibilities. I want to start by looking at an audio track I've created. I recorded a Tele-style guitar through a Fender Bassman. I just played a few chords and held them out to have a long decay. This will give you more possibilities as the sound won't be cutting off abruptly. Now, I'm going to grab my scissor tool and I'm going to cut it off right after the attack of the chord. This is merely a personal preference as it gives it a sort of glitchy robotic sound. Let's listen. It almost sounds like a Fender Rhodes. Now, we'll grab our scissor tool again, then the pointer tool, and drag it back so that we isolate this fragment of audio. To save time, I dragged the previous audio track onto a new track and isolated each fragment of audio. Let's listen. As you can see to the left, I've added a low pass and a high pass filter, as well as adding a bit of compression just to warm up and thicken the chords. So the question becomes, how do we load these fragments of audio into a sampler? We select Track, New Software Instrument Track, and Logic will automatically load the classic electric piano. We select the electric piano and change it to the EXS24 sampler. We're going to put it in stereo for now. The EXS sampler is Logic's synthesizing machine. It basically gives you a variety of options using filters, EQs, envelopes to manipulate the sample as much as you want. We're going to select Edit, and the Edit window will open up. Now, we'll drag this aside, select all these fragments of audio and simply drag and drop into the edit window. Now, Logic will ask if you would like to load the audio into contiguous zones. Contiguous means that each imported fragment of audio will be placed next to each other on adjacent keys on the keyboard. Therefore, the first piece of audio will be loaded on the C1, the next piece of audio on the C-sharp one, D, D-sharp, E, F, etc and we'll click OK. Now, in the playback region, Logic gives us three options. The first, which is selected right now, is called Pitch. Pitch means that Logic will manipulate the audio based on where it lies on the keyboard. We're going to deselect this for the purpose of this tutorial. Next is One Shot. One Shot means that no matter how long you hold down the key for, it will play the entire duration of the audio. Let's take a listen. I just merely pressed the key for a split second and it played the entire sound. Great. Now let's see what happens if we deselect one shot. Now we have full control on the duration of how long the sample is playing for. Reverse is self-explanatory. It will just play each sample in reverse. Let's give a quick listen we get that nice swelling guitar sound. Great. I'm going to uncheck reverse for the purpose of this tutorial. Now, we're going to X out and it's going to ask us to save. Let's save this sampler instrument tutorial. Replace. Great. Now we have the sampler instrument, which is basically a keyboard with our guitar chords on it. So, to the left we have MIDI effects. These MIDI effects will be able to do a variety of operations with our MIDI. Let's start with Chord Trigger. Whoops. Chord Trigger means that by pressing one key on the input, it will trigger a variety of keys on the output based on an interval, harmony, or extended harmony. So, we're going to go to Single because we're only going to press a single note, and let's check out some extended harmonies. Let's pick the Sus479 chord. As you can hear, it sounds sort of dissonant. This is because the initial audio that we recorded was a chord. It was not a single note. So it's basically creating a chord of a chord, creating all this dissonance. I sort of like it for that reason. And after the chord trigger, I'm going to put on an arpeggiator. An arpeggiator plays the notes of a chord in a specific sequence. So if I hold down this, it's playing the notes in the chord going up. 
This will be going down. This will go down then up. This will go in and out. This will be random. And by selecting the hand, you can choose the order by placing your hands on the keyboard to tell the computer what to do. The rate here is going to select how fast the arpeggiation goes. So here it's a 1 16th. Let's make it faster. Even faster. And we can make it really slow. Let's keep it about 1 16th for now. Let's look at some of the other MIDI effects. The modulator. The modulator will modulate the notes based on this wave up here. This graph down here will be the output of what's being modulated. So now, if I play a note, it will all be modulated by a sawtooth wave. And if we change the symmetry here, you can see down below on the graph it changing as well. Let's change it to a sine wave. And you can do square waves, and so on and so forth. The last MIDI effect I'd like to look at is the note repeater. The note repeater merely acts as a MIDI delay. So here the delay is in eighth notes, and I have three repeats. Let's turn the repeats all the way up. And let's change the rate. So now it's slower in half notes. If we have 30 second dotted notes, you can get some really bizarre sounds. So, right now this stuff is entirely crazy, but I wanted to show you something that I created that I think uses this in a really interesting way. I created this song using the electric guitar samples, as well as a drum track I created in Ultrabeat, along with a bass. this you can just hear the electric guitar with a slight note repeater on it. Here I have an extreme low pass filter with a high rate. I hope that you all found this tutorial helpful and this will expand your creative possibilities. Thank you for listening.